evening with your CIG TV News update. I'm Donna Bush. Thanks for watching. Ford and Commonwealth Office Minister Mr. Mark Simmons spends the day on Grand Cayman. The minister's day started with breakfast with Her Excellency Governor Helen Kilpatrick at Governor's House. The day didn't stop there as Mr. Simmons headed to Georgetown Police Station where he spoke with the Commissioner of Police and toured that facility. The first half of his day ended with lunch at the Governor's House where young Caymanian leaders were invited to attend. Now, while here, Minister Simmons also took some time to sign an important agreement with Premier Alden McLaughlin. Today is a significant day as the Cayman Islands and the United Kingdom sign an agreement to improve international tax compliance. This FATCA-style agreement will enable Cayman to share automatically financial information with the UK on UK taxpayers who hold accounts in the Cayman Islands. This builds on our shared history of cooperation in tax and transparency matters but it also strongly indicates our mutual support for standards across the spectrum of financial services that are globally accepted and practiced. Such standards, including those adhered to and monitored by the Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes, will improve the integrity and stability of all our economies by giving tax cheats no country in which to hide. Indeed, Cayman and the United Kingdom are standing shoulder to shoulder as part of the vanguard to improve tax compliance globally. Cayman is able to do this based on our strong engagement and activity in tax and transparency initiatives, which did not suddenly commence in recent months or weeks. On the contrary, our ability to respond quickly, credibly, and responsibly to developments is the tangible result of more than a decade of purposeful engagement and the knowledge and insights that it has provided to successive governments including this one. This ability to respond also is based on the effective consultation with our financial services industry, which is equally important. Government is pleased to have industry support for this agreement with the United Kingdom as the world moves rapidly towards automatic exchange as the global standard. On CIG TV Wednesday, see what Minister Simmons did for the rest of his visit to Grand Cayman. A working conference held at the Cayman Islands Further Education Center has attracted visitors from various European Union countries this week. The attendees are from various countries including Bulgaria, Norway, Germany, Italy, Sweden, Spain, France, Slovakia and Austria just to name a few. Now the Cayman Islands applied over one and a half years ago to have the group visit Cayman. They will learn of Cayman's successes and lessons learned in the process at SciFact and report on their findings. Now the focus is on common issues such as unemployment, employability, vocational education, training, tertiary education, and educational opportunities for second chances. Now, some of these countries reported alarming un unemployment rates from uh, 40 to 50 percent. Now, each day of the five-day working conference was themed varying topics from the overview of employability strategies at SciFact and across the Cayman Islands to first-hand involvement in employability, teaching, delivery, and assessment at the Cayman Islands Government Institute. Finally, a reminder about tonight's meeting at the Mary Miller Hall being held by the Ministry of Department, Ministry and Department of Tourism. Once again, uh, come out on November 5th uh, to hear more about the cruise port that we are embarking on. Again, that meeting starts at 7 o'clock and will end somewhere around 9 at the Mary Miller Hall tonight. Again, remember, if you missed our government news update, you can watch throughout the night or you can go online to our Facebook and YouTube pages. All right, everyone, that ends today's government news here on CIG TV. I'm Donna Bush, as always, thanking you for watching.